Hello there friends, Season is live here, oh my god, I'm so excited, we've got a lot to talk about. First and foremost, Train is back, officially in the game, together with wet skins and agent models. And surely we will talk about the other faxes in the newest patch. But hold on guys, because we've got to talk about American and Asian RMRs, because they've ended. And we've got some surprising results, alongside pretty cool other news. So prepare yourself, because it's gonna be long, but very informative. Without further ado, let's get straight to it. Before diving into the huge news, let's warm up a little. And I believe we should kick things off with Apex, who once again is trying to get fans' attention. The French captain has promised to shave his head again if Vitality wins the Major. I mean, the funny part is, he made the same promise before the Major in Paris but never followed through. Do you believe him, guys? I personally don't. Moreover, I think that karma will strike back. Because you have to fulfill your promises, you know? And yeah, it's still unclear if he and Vitality will even make it to the Major. Who knows what will happen at the European RMRs. And speaking of Apex, he recently launched a stream. It's a rare thing, because the last time it happened was a year ago. And it also wasn't that long, like 33 minutes. And you know who the main viewers were on Apex's stream? That's right, our followers and our Twitter admins. Ah, uh, says to news. Thank you, says to news or retrieve uh, whatever you did, my friend. Apex figured it out from the messages in the chat and even thanked everyone for the support. I mean, big shout out to Apex for reading our news and giving us so much content to cover. And yeah, if you want to be just like Apex, don't forget the link to our Twitter is in the description. And don't forget to drop a like right now, your support means a lot to us and thanks. Speaking of huge esports figures, I think we should talk about Onipixel. So according to Onipixel, it was incredibly challenging to get Get Valve's approval for the team's logo. As you know, on the logo there is only Pixel himself. So after reaching out, Valve directed him to HLTV and Liquipedia to negotiate. And they in turn forwarded the request to Perfect World and PGL, the tournament organizers. Finally, the drillers were allowed to play with their logo just recently, just before the matches. The streamer also mentioned how much he and the team appreciate the supportive messages from fans. Many viewers say that they got into esports specifically because of Oni Pixel, and he also added that the players genuinely feel happier thanks to the audience encouragement. I mean, the support was so overwhelming that as soon as the team jerseys went on sale, they were sold out in just like 5 minutes at 60 euros each. Waro 2 k one of the players from the Drillers, also spilled some behind the scenes details. A huge reason why many players joined the Drillers was basically for the additional exposure. He also added that Oni Pixel is more of a spiritual leader and a psychologist than a traditional coach. He basically just motivates them to win and does it correctly. For example, his brief pep talk before the last round against Lin Vision fired up the players, leading Drillers to victory. Uh, if you go to OT before, but then I told you, let's end this fucking now, okay? Please. If you go to OT, also no problem, but please, we can end this now, you can end this now, end it now, bro, alright? Easy, easy, no pressure. If you're in a clutch problem, this is the same fucking game. You're the same people, they're the same people as well. Remember? Let's go. What jail said, fuck in. However, the team did have someone dedicated to analytics. According to Voro2k, Onipixel has many friends who assist him with management and analysis, while Ecstatic's owner provides them key strategies. Don't forget that we will be talking about the Drillers' journey through the armors at the end of the video, right after the newest patch and the news segment. But you know what, my friends, of course, there should have been some sad news. I mean, it's more of a subjective thing, but I will just tell you about it. About it. 3D Max decided to rebrand, and their new logo looks not cool to be honest, uh, for me at least. I mean, their previous design was memorable, it was legendary, and many Counter Strike fans were eagerly waiting for it to be back in the game with stickers. And now, if the team qualifies for the major, we will see another logo. It honestly resembles G2's design, but in red. I mean, my guys, an era has come to an end, and the entire community is deep 
deeply disappointed. Do you like the new 3D Max logo? Share your thoughts in the comments below, because I honestly, obviously, like the previous one. And obviously the biggest news aside from the RMRs is the long-awaited return of Train. So with the recent update that came out last night, Valve finally reintroduced Train. Our beloved map is back, though with significant changes to some bomb sites and the overall design. Looking at site A, it's noticeably more open, a few trains near Main were removed, the bomb planting spot was shifted and Haven was entirely eliminated. And since skyboxes are no longer in the game, Valve added a roof above Site A to limit some smokes. Main was also modified, so now exiting from there no longer provides a view of connector, exposing the attacking player to various other positions. Defense on this map has changed slightly too, for instance some angles were removed on Ivy and Alley to simplify gameplay and reduce tight spaces. The biggest change is likely to up down, where the ladder was completely removed, making it impossible to surprise opponents with a drop from above. Spam your Fs in the comments below to pay respects for the pop dog. Instead there is just a new ladder accessible from B main. Site B itself was also updated. There is now more space to play from connector and the large yellow train in the center of the bomb site has been removed, allowing for more maneuverability let's say. Additionally the top passageway has been blocked, affecting both attackers and defenders. The T side now has less vision when entering and CTs can no longer control the top passageway entrance. The ladder leading to the passageway has also been changed. Another key addition, my friends, is the weather effects, as now it rains on train, which will likely impact everybody's FPS, especially for players with weaker GPUs. My condolences. And of course, alongside changes we've got some bugs, for example, some trains have broken models, which means hitting enemies accurately might not register in the game. Meanwhile, Austin has already found a new overpowered wallbang. And you know what guys, the developers also shared some easter eggs and references on the new train. So one graffiti pays homage to the old pop dog, another lists the names of everyone who worked on the new map, 25 people as it turns out. There is also an image with the train's route, and from Russian it says cobblestone, assault and bank at the end, as the last stops. I mean, Valve, is that a hint? I would love to see Assault back. Plus, there are nods to older versions of Train, such as the TV showing Train from CS 1.6 and a photo from CS. Besides Train, the developers also introduced a grenade guide to help new or returning players to adapt to the map and practice their throws to make the gameplay even more engaging. Some pro players have already reacted to the Train's return, noting that the map looks beautiful and cool. But they didn't expect so many changes and the gameplay feels completely different now. For example, Virtus Pro's Norbert was especially displeased, even demanding the old train to be back. However, everyone agrees that the map looks impressive in terms of graphics. And G2 even took the opportunity to mock Navi by comparing them to trash. Ah, uh, the good old trolling on Twitter, I like it. But I have to note guys that the update didn't just include Train, there are four more new maps. Basalt, Eden, Palais and Whistle. Each map contains interesting easter eggs and references. On Basalt there is a QR code, if you scan it it will throw you to the complaint book. And you can basically write a complaint. I just guess it will go to the developer, not Valve themselves. On Eden the developers added a lot of license plates full of references, fans will probably decipher most of them. And you know what my friends, Onipixel did make it into CS2. There is a tribute to Onipixel on Eden, as the jewelry store named Mark and Co with gold 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 written is basically a reference to Oni's real name and the frequent shouts of gold 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 when he opens cases. And there's literally a drill laying around. And that's pretty amazing. Palais is full of books and includes a for sale ad for agent skins and a note from a developer about missing danger zone. The map also has pigeons, a counter strike piano and french police officers, though strangely without pupils. There's even a mini quest to find a cat, try to find it yourself and share in the comments.
happens if you did. Meanwhile, Whistle is just about trains. Imagine if Valve didn't introduce train, but all these leaks were just leading to Whistle map. What a trolling from Valve would it be? Fortunately, it didn't happen. And also, surely, my friends, Overpass got a rework. Its lights have been corrected, also some balloons removed and... I mean, dirt? Okay, but what does it do with the map? Ah, yeah, I should notice that there's no water on it anymore. Like, at all. They just removed it. And here I have to notice something strange. You see, besides the map updates, Donk noticed a change to the Desert Eagle. Donk says that it now shoots faster, making it even more effective in fast-paced pushes. But there's not a single word about this in the patch notes. So it's either about the new animations or the damage prediction system they introduced as well, or something else. My friends, don't forget to share your impressions of the newest update in the comments below. It's very interesting to discuss and see what you write. And now, my friends, let's dive into the main event, the RMR matches, starting with the Asian bracket and the matchup between the Drillus and the Lin Vision. The first matches of the RMRs were in best of one, making it easier for underdogs to shine and favorites to slip up. So into the game itself, it was ancient. The Drilla started on the T side, which led to some initial struggles, but as soon as they had enough money, they managed to even the score. Despite dropping two frustrating rounds after that, they responded with a streak of four rounds, ending the first half 7-5. After the side switch, things got even more intense. We saw the first knife kill, with Woro 2K securing it during the pistol round. Following that, Drilla took four more rounds and reached the map point. However, the Chinese team wasn't ready to give up just yet and mounted an insane comeback, closing the gap to 11-12. And at that moment, the pep talk happened. Only Pixel stepped in. He motivated the players and they won a crucial force buy. The time is running down, the bomb is in tow, and he hits the first shot. He's got to look for more, he's got to hunt them. I don't think he's got enough time to run. It's over, it's done, he misses it. And Drillers secure a 13th and go up to the upper bracket best to three against the Mongols. This round wasn't just memorable for the Drillas' first RMR win, but also for an impressive flash play by West Melon, definitely one to take note of. Speaking of other opening matches from the first round, Rare Atom swept GR, Mongols defeated Alter Ego easily, and surprisingly, FlyQuest lost to Talon. Which wasn't that good for Drillas, because they had to face the Mongols, the top team in Asia. And, well, let's talk about this one. The match kicked off with a motivational speech from Oni Pixel. He reminded the team that their opponents are human too and prone to make mistakes, urging them to stay calm and play their own Counter-Strike. And you know what, guys? What unfolded was incredible, especially on Mirage, the Drillus's pick. It felt like the teams had swapped places, with Drillus absolutely demolishing their opponents. They tore through Mongols' defense and at one point held a staggering eight. 1 lead. A dominant first half by the Drillas, ending 10-2. Although after the side switch, the Mongols just came back. They won nearly 8 rounds in a row. But in a critical moment, Mazdal clutched the B-side solo, securing the first map for the Drillas and leaving Mongols visibly stunned. Next map was Ancient, the Mongols' pick. The kings of the Asian region wasted no time. They ended the first half with a commanding 10-2 lead and just finished off Drillas in the second half. Nearly a flawless performance. And the final map was Anubis. And you know what, guys? The Mongols excel at this map just as much as at Ancient. Well, it's a weaker map for the Drillas. So, unfortunately, but quite expectedly, it was a loss for the Drillas. The first half ended 10-2 again, and they had a little struggle in the second half, and it was 13-5 in the end. The Mongols are the first team to reach the Major. And you know what, guys? After their victory, the Mongols posted posted a message on their Twitter, basically directed at the Drillas and also to the other teams of the Asian RMRs. They said that if Drillas make it to the Major through the lower bracket, it would be a testament to their strength. It's a man's battle, and if they win, it's okay. But they also encourage all other teams to fight to the end and showcase the full power of Asian CS. This whole statement was basically a hint that the Drillas are not an Asian team in the Asian region. So the 
other matches didn't bring much better news for the lower seeded teams. In the upper bracket, Freer Atom faced off against Talon. And you know what? Talon tried to surprise Rear Atom by picking Vertigo, but they were ready for it. A solid defense and then just outplaying Talon on the T side. The second map was Inferno, which followed a nearly identical pattern. Rear Atom took the first half 7 5, then won three more rounds on defense and secured a comfortable lead. After which they just closed out the match in their favor, securing their spot at the major alongside the Mongols. Interestingly, the last time Rare Atom attended the major was over 2000 days ago, when they played under the Vici Gaming banner. From that original lineup, only Kays remains in the roster. In the lower bracket, FlyQuest faced off against GR, and the Australians completely dominated their opponents. They closed out both maps with a score of 13-8, making GR the first team to drop from the tournament. The second match in the lower bracket was between Lin Vision and Alter Ego. This one also ended as expected, with Lin Vision taking the win. However, it wasn't a straightforward match, because both teams won on each other's map picks, but on the decider, Lin Vision left no room for Alter Ego, securing a decisive victory. So, Alter Ego is the second team to leave the tournament. Next, my guys, in the lower bracket was the showdown between Drillus and FlyQuest, a crucial match for Onipixel's team, as it would decide their spot at the major. The series began on Anubis, FlyQuest's pick. After the defeat against the Mongols, it was clear that Drillus had reviewed their strategies, as they started strong with three consecutive rounds. However, FlyQuest's Daxter responded with a triple kill, taking the first round for his team, sparking a streak of three. The match became a back and forth, and FlyQuest could have pulled ahead if not for Waro 2K, who won a crucial 1v2, which allowed the Drillus to lead 7 5 at the first half. After the side switch, things took a different turn, and it got worse for Drillus. Especially when Lias won a 1v3, followed by another clutch from Alistair. The Drillus managed their first defensive round only at 12 7, ultimately losing the map. Next was Dust 2, the Drillus' pick. And you know what surprised me? Here, Onipixel's team just destroyed FlyQuest. 10 2 in the first half. FlyQuest players were just lost on the map. They finished it 13-2, and I thought the Drillus can make it, it was really close. The decider was ancient, the tensest map Drillus had faced in the tournament. It started poorly for them, as they barely scraped together four rounds in the first half, with Waro 2K carrying the final round. The pistol round went to Drillus, sparking hopes for a comeback. They managed to even the score at 8-8. But Dexter pulled off a smart play around a smoke, giving FlyQuest another round round, which pushed them to 11-8. But Warotoke kept the hope alive and clutched a 1v2, which brought Drillus to map point. They nearly closed it out, but fate had other plans. The match went to overtimes. Three rounds of it, each closer than the last. But, well, my guys, my Drillus, unfortunately for Onipixel's team, FlyQuest eventually took the map and they advanced to the lower bracket finals. The Drillus lost 5 map points, they had enough chances, so I guess I can say it was a fair battle. And after the match, the community split. Some fans were relieved, arguing that a team with European players shouldn't be competing at the Asian Aramars, while others were disappointed to see the most hyped team eliminated. As Onipixel shared afterwards, he has no plans to quit coaching. If not with this roster, then with another. For him, that's what matters most. But he also said that it was one of the most stressful moments of his life, and he got really, really tired. Meanwhile, it seems that the Drillers are done, because Waro2K already announced that he is looking for a new team, and other players as well. And yeah, the main hater of the Drillers is Richard Lewis, who was very happy that the Drillers are out. Glad this Drillers nonsense is over, a world championship having its rules exploited because a streamer wants to make money by having their favorite
interface in the game is garbage. Hoping the loopholes that allow this farce are closed moving forward. My guess is that Richard Lewis is just envy that no one uses his face as a team logo. The second finalist in the lower bracket was Lin Vision. But after such an intense semi final, the Lin Vision vs. FlyQuest match turned out to be far less thrilling. The Australians completely dominated and crushed Lin Vision on their own map pick. It was a devastating 13 2 score. And then they just finished the job on Vertigo, 13-8. As a result, the teams advancing from the Asian Aromars are the Mongols, Rare Atom and FlyQuest. I know, I know guys, the video is too long, but we just have to do it. So let's sum up the current results of the American RMR. Starting with the shocking first day, where the region's two top teams lost their matches to clear underdogs. First, Wildcard swept Liquid on Inferno, followed by Legacy defeating Fury on the same map. After the match, Twist complained that the admin took his mouse and did something with it before the game, hence his poor performance. Nav confirmed the mouse driver check and he also adjusted his mouse afterwards. It's likely just a coincidence or maybe psychosomatic, but wildcard players were checked as well. Wildcard, by the way, is perhaps the region's most underrated team and turned out to be the first big surprise of the whole Aramars, making it to the major with a 3-0 record. It's worth noting that wildcard is currently ranked 32nd on HLTV. Along the way they beat Liquid number 13, Pain number 16 and 9Z number 25. But we all know who really sparked Wildcard's victory. You guys know Amarant, right? So she's the co-owner of the team, if you didn't know. And a content creator for the work. And after making it to the major, the team celebrated by shouting her name. A proof of the impact one person can make, if you know what I mean. I mean. The second team to advance with a 3-0 score was MIBR. The Brazilian team has already shown their strength against top European and American teams recently and now confidently moved from the Oromar to the Major's main stage. Case and Nouns had the worst performances, both dropping from the tournament without a single win. Nouns' roster includes well-known players like Rush and Junior, who previously played for Complexity. Boss and Crew also left the tournament, each winning only one match without showing any high-level results. Complexity and Pain, however, advanced with a 3-1 record. And Complexity, by the way, lost only to MIBR, who showcased excellent play during the whole tournament. And as mentioned, Pain's only loss was to the underdog's wildcard. And now, my friends, I will talk about the most intriguing match between Fury and Liquid. After both teams lost their first matches, each won two, setting up a showdown for a spot in the major. So the action kicked off on Anubis, Liquid's pick. And you know what? It started surprisingly easy in their favor. In the first half, they took 10 rounds, with Yikinder securing an ace. Oh, still can't hit that the Oh, there you go, on to Yuri. Another from Dark, main under pressure. This is a B finish and it's aggressive. Yakinda makes the orb work for him. A bullet spare oh, and he hits the third. <laughs> Miraculous from Yakinda. Oh, filling the feed. Could Marex be returning to his old form? I mean, guys, it was a nice map for him. And by the way, in the next round, JKS landed an ace as well. It was overall an incredible gameplay from Liquid on the first map. After the side switch, Liquid finished off their opponents. It was easy. Next came Dust 2, furious pick. While Liquid dominated on the first map, their performance on the second was phenomenally poor. This time, Furia took control. After a relatively even start, Fury went on a nearly 9 round streak and ended the first half with a 3 fold lead. On the pistol round, K Serato stepped up with a triple kill and Furia just finished the second map with a score of 13 3. And the decider was Inferno. Surprisingly, this turned out to be the closest map of them all. The game started quite poorly for the Brazilian team as Liquid were winning almost every round, even from 2v5s, which meant Furia didn't get their first round until it was 0 6. But you know, even that didn't help, as in the next round, Twists won a 1v2. So he kept the team's momentum going. This led to 8-4 by the end of the first half. 
Furia then lost the pistol round but won the force buy, narrowing the score to 9-7, where Ultimate took control. After his quadro, Liquid didn't drop a single round, ultimately securing the major spot. Here's an interesting fact for you guys, alongside qualifying for the major, Twists is also celebrating his birthday today. So congratulations my king. In another elimination match, Red Canets faced off against Legacy, with the latter ultimately being knocked out of the tournament. So currently at 2-2 and in a tense situation we have 9Z, MAT, Bestia, Imperial, Red Canids and Furia. I mean some huge names here. Who will make it? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And that's all for today my friends. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button right now and subscribe to the channel. Also leave comments with whatever you like because it helps improving our channel a lot. So thank you in advance. I'm not saying goodbye for a long time. See you soon.